Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class, where at Lecture 7.6, uh, we'll be covering some important OpenACC programming details. The objective of this lecture is for you to understand some important and sometimes subtle details in OpenACC programming. We'll be discussing the concept of parallel loops, and um, we'll be uh, discussing GANs and workers, and then we will also be uh, uh, discussing the difference between the concept of kernel regions versus parallel regions. Here we show uh, on top the, uh, the example that we showed in the previous uh, lecture. So we show that um, a for, for loop can be marked by the pragma as a ACC parallel loop with copy in and copy out uh, 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 arrangements. So this is actually equivalent to marking a particular uh, we, we can add a, a bracketed uh, brackets around the loop and make the region a parallel region. So here we only show say that the following bracketed uh, code is a parallel region. And then within the region, we say that a particular uh, that loop in the region is a uh, is a uh, open ACC loop. So this essentially these two are equivalent. And the parallel loop is really just a parallel region with only one single loop inside. So now we can take a look at the uh, a little bit more detail about what parallel regions mean. So whenever we mark a piece of code as a parallel region, here we say uh, ACC parallel with copy, in, uh, copy out of A with, as an output, and then we specify, we can specify the number of GANs and the number of workers in a GAN. So um, in, in this case, we're saying that the following piece of code is a parallel piece of code, and we would like to have 1,024 GANs, and each GAN will have 32 workers. So we will have a total of 1,024 times 32, which is 32K workers. And um, all of them will actually go and execute this uh, region um, redundantly uh, and in parallel. And, um, but the redundant execution is only going to happen at the GAN level. So there will be one representative called GAN Li in each GAN to execute uh, this particular statement. And uh, so there will be 1,024 instances of this statement executed by the 1,024 GAN leads. So um, this uh, essentially, if we look at this particular uh, statement, we're uh, generating the equivalent of a CUDA kernel out of this, uh, out of this uh, statement. And um, uh, the uh, CUDA kernel will be launched with 1,024 thread blocks. And then uh, one thread in each thread block will be executing this statement. So now, um, what uh, you're going to ask, why do we want to do this kind of redundant execution? The answer is usually we don't do the redundant execution unless we can actually use some of the redundant execution to lead to productive uh, parallel execution. So this is shown in this slide. We're, well, we're showing that same piece of code here. And um, uh, in this case, all the uh, 1,024 GAN leads will be executing an instance of this for loop. And this is obviously not what we want in a productive parallel execution. So uh, we can uh, easily change this piece of code into a productive parallel execution form by adding a uh, ACC loop GAN or a GAN loop uh, pragma in, uh, in front of the for loop. So whenever we declare a, uh, we have a for loop in a uh, parallel uh, region, and um, uh, if we declare this loop to be an ACC GAN loop, then uh, we actually will have all the GANs um, to divide up the number of iterations of this loop. So we have 1,024 in the, uh, executing this region. So we are going to have all the 1,024 GANs in this case to divide up the 2,048 iterations of the for loop. So each GAN leader lead will only execute two iterations of this loop in the, uh, once we declare this uh, loop to be GAN loop. So now we have a productive uh, cooperative execution of the loop iterations. 
and this is called work sharing. And um, uh, we can also uh, further extend this concept into the worker level. So now we show that the, um, the same code, but we show that uh, within, the, um, within that loop, we have an inner loop where um, uh, the, uh, we declare that inner loop to be a open ACC worker loop by calling it ACC loop worker. So in this case, um, all, the, um, all, all the inner loop iterations will be further divided uh, by the workers in again. So uh, we will di distribute two of the iterations, uh, the outer loop into each GAN. And then within, the, uh, uh, within each GAN, these two outer loop iterations would, uh, would uh, combine with the 512 iterations of the inner loop to generate 1,024 equivalent iterations of, the, uh, of this inner loop. So that will be divided by the 32 workers in that, uh, in that GAN. So each worker will end up executing 32 iterations of the inner loop. So you can think about it as um, there will be uh, 2,048 times 512, which equals a million uh, instances of the full statement that correspond to the combination of outer loop and inner loop iterations. And um, uh, we will divide up this um, 1 million by 32K workers, uh, 32 from each GAN and 1,024 GANs. So that uh, will give us 32, uh, 32 instances of the full, full or the 32 iterations of the innermost loop and outer loop combination that will be executed productively by each worker. So this allows us to have a, uh, essentially to generate this whole uh, statement into the equivalent of a, uh, of a uh, 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 kernel in CUDA but in, inside each kernel, uh, in, inside the CUDA kernel, um, if we were doing the CUDA programming, we would need to be adjusting the, um, the uh, loop to take out the outer loop and then to rewrite the inner loop so that each inner loop uh, in the, in the inner loop, the loop in the kernel will only execute 32 times. And then we would need to generate the appropriate um, uh, thread index and uh, block index in order for, the, uh, for each instance of the kernel to execute the 32 instances uh, or 32 iterations of that innermost loop. So all these details are actually handled by the OpenACC compiler, so we don't need to do this by hand. And this is really an illustration of the convenience of OpenACC programming. The, uh, the code looks much, much more like the original sequential code, and all this work partitioning and distribution and so on no longer need to be done by hand, but only by uh, you know, these pragma, uh, stain, uh, pragma uh, clauses. So now here uh, we are ready to look at a little bit more um, substantial example. So uh, again, by marking a region of code uh, as parallel region, we are going to generate the equivalent of a kernel that contains these statements, even though these statements will, will uh, be adjusted in some way. So um, first of all, um, it's easy to see that the statements 1, 3, 5, 6 will be all redundantly executed by the GAN leads um, in, the, um, in, uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the runtime. And then um, a more subtle part is that because we are marking um, the two for loops as GAN loops, then um, the GANs will actually divide up the uh, iterations of these for loops. And um, so that each GAN will take only a th uh, one uh, 30 second uh, portion of the, uh, of the loop iterations. And uh, so the loops will actually be partitioned into the GANs um, for uh, the collaborative execution. And this code may actually further use workers. That is, um, in some implementations, the compiler may even decide to, uh, to use multiple workers. And then, um, so the iterations that we distribute into each GAN could be further divided into workers. However, the number of workers to use uh, will be decided by the implementation 
by the compiler and the runtime, and um, uh, the users will typically not be informed, or the, uh, it may not be obvious to the user that uh, this further work distribution is happening. And because the user never specified the number of workers in each GAN, so um, it will be totally up to the compiler to decide the number of workers that uh, the compiler uh, may decide to use for each GAN. So um, now we can uh, have a, if we have a situation where statement one, three, and five, six really should only execute once, then uh, we can just declare this whole thing with only one GAN. So the number of GANs in this, uh, in this pragma is one. So uh, now um, those statements will only be executed once. But uh, we can uh, specify the number of workers to be 32. So in this case, uh, we only execute statements 1, 3, uh, 5, 6 uh, only once. But uh, for the for loops, we will have 32 workers. Each one will take one 30 seconds uh, uh, portion of the uh, iterations of the, those two for loops and collaborate to execute uh, those for loops. So now that we understand um, the parallel regions and how the loops in parallel regions uh, can be uh, you know, distributed into the uh, GANs, uh, we also should understand another important concept, which is the kernel regions. Kernel regions are kind of like parallel regions, but the, the kernel regions are really more uh, dis uh, descriptive than prescriptive in its, uh, in, in its nature. So the, the kernel regions are uh, essentially telling the, um, the compiler that um, the, uh, the, the programmer uh, thinks that uh, there is a, a good potential for parallel execution of this entire piece of code. And the compiler can decide whether all these loops should belong in the same kernel um, when, um, during runtime, or, um, these, uh, or these loops should be uh, broken into multiple kernels. So, uh, and also um, the programmer can specify different numbers uh, for, e uh, for each loop in the, kern uh, in the uh, kernel region. So in this case, the programmer decided that the first loop can use 1,024 GANs, and the second loop should only use 512 GANs. And for the third loop, the programmer says, oh, uh, I'm going to let the compiler decide how many GANs to use. So in this case, whenever uh, the GANs are different, chances are the compiler will likely break down this region into uh, uh, separate kernels. And each kernel will be launched with different uh, number of GANs. And in a CUDA-based implementation, the OpenACC code will likely have a a uh, kernel that is executed by 1,024 thread blocks, and then it will have another kernel that executes 512 thread blocks. So um, this is actually somewhat different from the uh, parallel uh, regions, where uh, if we say, uh, if we call this region uh, parallel rather than kernels, that means that uh, we actually would uh, like to have the entire region to be implemented with a the equivalent of a single kernel. So the number of GANs uh, should be consistent uh, throughout the region, and you should be able to just generate a CUDA-style kernel and run that uh, code uh, as a single kernel. So um, now we have the concept of uh, prescriptive versus descriptive uh, pragmas. The parallel regions are prescriptive uh, re uh, pragmas that essentially orders the compiler to do what, you, uh, what you're uh, telling the compiler to do, versus uh, the kernel regions are actually descriptive um, pragmas that tells the compiler that uh, there's some good potential for parallel execution, and it gives the compiler a very high level of flexibility in the implementation of these things. In fact, the compiler may just decide that the third one remains as host code and um, you know what, not uh, generate the kernel, uh, parallel execution kernel for that third uh, loop at all. So um, this uh, essentially is a very important concept for uh, any OpenACC or OpenMP programmers to understand that uh, some of the pragmas are descriptive and some of the pragmas are prescriptive. So um, 
uh, this slide pretty much summarizes what I already uh, mentioned. So the I, J, and K loops uh, each could become a kernel, and one of them may even dis, uh, remain as a uh, host code, or multiple of them may uh, end, uh, end up being uh, sequential host code. So um, the, this uh, uh, sums up pretty much the uh, most important details of OpenACC programming. Uh, for those of you who would like to learn yet more about uh, OpenACC programming, I'd like to encourage you to finish reading uh, chapter 15. And also, um, uh, there are plenty of online documentation about OpenACC uh, that you can uh, dig into. But one, uh, all those concepts should now become very easy for you, because we already have covered the most important conceptual foundation for, um, the, uh, for these OpenACC uh, programming features. Thank you.